Hello, and welcome to the Aspire Goalkeeping Podcast, the place to be for all of your goalkeeping talk. In this series of podcasts, we will be talking to a range of goalkeepers and coaches from the professionals right the way down to the grassroots players and coaches to get their input and thoughts on a wide range of topics to do with goalkeeping and to learn a little bit more about them as people and their careers. Sit back, take a listen and get involved in the Aspire Goalkeeping Podcast. Welcome to the Aspire Goalkeeping Podcast. Uh, we're here today with Paul Musselwhite. Uh, I'm Adam. I'm Sam. So, Paul, thank you ever so much for joining us today. Um, could you start off just by telling us a little bit about yourself, your career, um, and your job in football nowadays, please? Uh, yeah, um, I was an apprentice at Portsmouth uh, in the 80s, 1985. I did my apprenticeship to 87. Um, had a year as a non-contract pro where I went on loan to Scunthorpe. Um Got released and signed for Scunthorpe. Uh, made my debut when I was 19. I uh, had four years at Scunny to begin with. Uh, went to Port Vale where I played for eight years. Hull for four years uh, after that. And then back to Scunthorpe. Um, coat, uh, played non-league for probably two or three years. And then was player coach at Lincoln and um, York for two years respectively at each club. Uh, before becoming like the full-time goalkeeping coach at Scunthorpe. Um, the moment still, uh, eight years later, I'm still <laughs> goalkeeping coach at Scunthorpe as well. So what that's what I do at the moment. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, obviously, you say you've been goalkeeper coach for, what, looking at eight years now at Scunny. Uh, obviously, you've seen plenty of goalkeepers come through the ranks and obviously obviously not come through the ranks. Um what what would you say your favourite part of being at Scunny is? Because obviously you played in different divisions. Uh, what's your, what's the favourite part of your job at Scunny at the moment? Yes, um, I think like obviously I, I do the academies as well. Yeah. So you know we've we've had uh, Adam come through over and play a first team game this year in the Leeson dot com. Um, the last goalkeeper that did that and probably in probably the last thirty forty years was Josh Lillis, and that was. 2006 that when I was a player so you know from our point of view that's that's good to see as well um you, you're ultimately judged on first team Class. so you know what I mean my job although I do enjoy doing the academies my main job the first team goalkeeping coach and that's what you're judged on over the years we've had some really good goalkeepers at first team level the pair of you have worked with quite a few fair of them mm, um so you know what i mean we, we, i've been lucky in the in the people i've managed to coach definitely definitely well you're actually our first ever aspiring dorsey for our gloves <laughs> <laughs> which uh is you are very lucky i have to say <laughs> as are we um are we? so just let us know, let people know what obviously you think about our gloves. Do you, do you like them? Is there anything we could do better with them? Or just be honest and let us know what you think about no, them. No, I've, I've, you know, when uh, yourself and Adam told me, probably, what would that be, over a year and a half, maybe, oh, phew, maybe two years ago now, mm. um, that what you were thinking of doing. Yeah. And, you know, it's a big market out there. And, you, and, you know, I was quite happy. I said to you straight away, I'll help you, I'll wear yeah. them. And I mm. have done. And, I'll be quite honest, uh, years ago, uh, most of my career, I wore Sondikas in South Sports, mm. and I would have had no problem wearing the Aspires at all. Um, I like them. Um, you know, I, I join in training now and again, I have to <laughs> tell you still, uh, and I would have had absolutely no problem wearing them sort of in, in the championship years ago. Mm. Not, not a problem at all. I'll slip you that far. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? You, yeah. You're, since I've probably been coaching, I've because I was sponsored by Sondico and Southport from my playing career, you, mm. you obviously had to wear them. But over the years, uh, since I've been coaching, I've worn a number of different gloves. Um, you know, people well, give you free. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. get free. Yeah, free definitely. You take what you can get. Yeah, you take what <laughs> you can get. Seven. So, uh, you know, and I've probably worn more different gloves over the last probably seven or eight years yeah. than, mm. than sort of most really. And as I said, the Aspires are as good as any of them. No, that's brilliant. So can we take it that you'd recommend them to, to people to buy? Yeah, yeah. I've, so, I've said to you, you know, obviously uh, Sam does the academies yes. at mm. Scunthorpe. So I think, like, you know, you, you've got, like, a base there where yeah, you can definitely. get them out and, mm. and get them into people wearing them. It's what I said at the beginning, it's a difficult market right, because yeah. there's a lot of people out there who are 
who are trying to get into that that sort yeah. of business, but you've got your big main companies yeah. who take up probably I would imagine ninety percent of of the market really. And people's pockets. Yeah, and, <laughs> and they charge a fortune <laughs> yeah. for for their gloves. Which if people buy them and there's a market for them, it's not a problem. No, but no. I think you know for for what I've seen this year and especially sort of how good they've been and value mm. for money as good. well. That's good to hear. Mm, good to hear. Um, so obviously. You had a long, long playing career, playing until you were a very, the very young age of just over 40, I think it was. Um, 44. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I say just over. I was over. sat on the bench in League 2 at 44 <laughs> until I got the sack. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I, I know what my favourite club for you would be, you know, Hull City. Uh, but I think what, we both do, yes. obviously. <laughs> what would your favourite club be that you played for, favourite time of your career as well? What What would you say your best best part of your um, career is? I think that, that's a difficult one because obviously I'm Portsmouth, born and bred and I'm a Portsmouth supporter yeah. um, and uh, I did my apprenticeship and a year as a non-contract pro and never played a game for Portsmouth mm. so I'd, I would probably swap a lot of my games that I did play for a, pl- a coupling goal for Portsmouth <laughs> years ago but I think as I said I was lucky um, you know I, I made my debut when I was 19 so I was really lucky at Scunthorpe and played in the first games at Glanford Park and um, uh, Port Vale, we were in the championship for six years, so that that was like a fantastic time as well. But then obviously going to Hull, um, I, I played in the last game at oh, Boothbury. Oh, we never there had this it one is. before. <laughs> <laughs> I played in the last game, I've told you a million times, I played in the last game at Boothbury in the first game at the KC, oh. so I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, and as I said, I was part of eventually a squad that uh, managed to get promoted out of, of League Two under Peter Taylor then. Very nice. That was Very the start nice. of a good run for the club, wasn't it, really, with that in that kind of respect? Yeah, I think, um, you know, with, with the crowd base, Hove, to me, are a lot like Portsmouth because Portsmouth obviously had, had sunk to League Two the last, probably in the last 10 years and they're hopefully on their way back up now. But Hull had been sort of languishing at the bottom of, you know, League League Two for, for years and there had been investment. You'd had... All of a sudden, you had Brian Little, who was like, when he was appointed, it was a, a, like probably a big shock in the football world. But that was like the, how how they wanted to go about trying to get promoted. They had Peter uh, Peter Taylor as well, Jan Mulby in between there, who I played under as well, um, who obviously didn't have the best of times. But Peter Taylor, um, you know, he, he was really good for whole City Football mm-hmm. Club and got them to to the championship and then obviously Phil Brown took on the extra strap into the good day, uh, premiership. Was, what good, a day that was, day. by the way. I was there yeah, for that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, fantastic. But yeah, so obviously you had a long playing career like we've, like we've mentioned. Did you always plan to go into coaching after your career or was that something that kind of you fell into after your career finished? It was, um, I don't know, I never really had any plans. Um, I, I actually, when I left Scunthorpe at 36, I signed for East Lee because I'm from down south, so we were trying to sort of move back down south, and it all fell through. Um, so I ended up, I went back to Port Vale for six months. My mate was the manager, and their goalie got injured, so I went and did him a favour, and then played non-league for a couple of years, and basically what I did for a lot of that time was ring round football clubs and, mm. and sort of say, you know, I'm, I'm playing at, first of all, I was at Harrogate, and then I played for Gateshead, and like, you know, say, right, you know, can I come in? Um, mm. And but at the time, there there wasn't a real lot going. Um, mm. I eventually managed to, you know, go and um, become the the goalie coach at Lincoln uh, and play a coach as well there under mm. Peter Jackson. So, you know, I was probably lucky that a job c- that came up quite close to me um, and was able to do that. Mm. Do, do you enjoy the coaching? Is that is that is it better than playing? Would you say? Or do, would you? No, I don't that? think there's nothing better than playing. Mm. Um, but you, you still get like the buzz of match day. You still, yeah. I still enjoy, you know, seeing hopefully seeing people progress. Um, when you know, even at academy level, and seeing them come through and progress mm. like yourselves. Um, but there's nothing that compares to uh, to playing. Mm. I think this season, this season at Scunthorpe has been quite difficult because we started off so poorly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's been really good, like you know how we how we've got into a bit of form mm-hmm. uh, and basically got ourselves hopefully out of trouble yes, this yeah, season. Touch water, um, everyone's done really well at the club um, to to get to where we are at the moment. Mm-hmm. Definitely, that's no, brilliant. Uh, obviously, 
myself being a coach, um, and there's plenty of other young goalkeeper coaches that want to come through. I obviously enjoy probably it's weird because I enjoy the coaching probably just as much as I do playing. Um, is there any tips you can give for me? Obviously, you've done a lot of coaching experience and playing experience. Any tips you can give to me and all young other goalkeeper coaches, um, on how they can improve and how they can learn. I think like obviously the the one the thing I've said to you is you know you, in in this day and age you need to go and do your badges. Yeah. Um, you you learn a lot. Even I've I've just done my A license. Uh, year last year and you you meet so many people on their yeah. courses and you're networking um you know what i mean you, you get people you know offer your goalkeepers talk to you about goalkeepers yeah. we got um the apprentice goalkeeper from sheffield wednesday uh who who we got him through me being on the a license and him being released at sheffield wednesday yeah and their goalie coach going he's going to be released you want to take him so you know just look things like that um I think there's a lot of young goalie coaches at the moment. Uh, mm. As I said, doing my A licence, I was the oldest one on it. <laughs> uh, and there was a, a lot of um, academy goalie coaches, probably a lot of them under 30, yeah. um, who had got into their coaching early, like like yourself, Sam. And, mm. and, you know, that was the route they had taken. And working at uh, decent clubs as well. A lot of them oh, were at, like, mm. really good clubs. Um, and their clubs had like seen the importance of getting them on their their coaching badges as well. And yeah. as I said, the A license um, is is the basically the yeah. top one you can get in this country. Um, and I would say probably seventy percent of the people on the course were under twenty three academy goalie coaches. Mm, wow. Well, hopefully, obviously, I can do it. I'm doing my UFB, unfortunately, obviously, yeah. COVID's kind yeah. of started yeah. that a lot, but hopefully I'll be able to get that done and mm. move straight on to the air licence. So, and then good. I'm coming for your job. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be well old then. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Then. <laughs> that's fantastic. So, um, obviously, you've been involved in football for probably, I don't know how many years now, 60 for a long, long time now. Um, since then, compared to now, it's probably changed a lot, I'm guessing. Uh, do you feel keepers now are better equipped with what they get? Or do you think back then it was it was kind of similar to what it is now? Um, I think, like, obviously the, the game uh, with your feet's evolved massively. Mm. Mm. Um, I, I find it interesting that when I was growing up, we had the best goalkeepers in the world, England, uh, and now we're unfortunately lagging behind. I don't know, sort of... I'd, I'd like to know what the Brazilian coaches have been doing yeah. the last couple, <laughs> probably the last 10 years could, to produce like Alisson and Edison. Uh, so, you know, it'd be interesting to see. Mm. I think they're probably, in my opinion, the first two goalkeepers who are outstanding with their feet, but outstanding goalkeepers as mm -hmm. well. I think there was a, yeah. you know, there was a transition where everyone wanted a good goalkeeper with their feet, um, but probably not the best goalkeepers in the world. Mm, but, yeah. they're, you know, I think there's a lot more now who... Are outstanding with their feet and outstanding goalkeepers. Um, mm -hmm. That that's the biggest, obviously, transition in the in the game over the years yeah. um, that has happened. And as I said, you you you're regarded as the first line of attack yeah. now in goal. Yeah, so yeah. you know what I mean. You, you some of the some of the stuff you see on telly uh, with teams playing out is is quite ridiculous. Is, and yeah. you know what I mean. If if your goalkeeper can't do that. Then, then you're going to struggle as well as like obviously your 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 outfield players. Yeah. So how can like would you say obviously me and you both work in academies, not necessarily just us but academies from the top like the academy manager working downwards. How can we do that to help our goalkeepers become better with the feet? I think obviously you know everyone says it repetition um, at our club at Scunthorpe it's difficult because of our facilities yeah. uh, we. You know, we we've all been in in the academy, Adam mm, and yeah. you, Sam, uh, yeah. as a goalkeeper and as a coach. And probably one of our biggest problems at the club is the facilities, and we struggle with that. Um, and if you're trying to do like sessions where, you know, you're trying to pick out playing short, yeah. playing, you know, probably into mid third of the pitch, and then and long as well, then we're going to struggle because we basically haven't had the yeah. facilities mm. to do that. Yeah. Probably early in in the summer we have when we're outside, but through the winter yeah. we haven't. Mm. Um, but you know, for me, everything's the same. You do repetition. We we you you you're out every day doing goalkeeping sessions oh, when yeah. you're training, mm. and basically all you're ever really doing is repetition. Yeah. Um, 
and and training you do a lot more like in training for what you really need on a saturday yeah. uh when i was sort of younger the the number of reps we did were ridiculous to, yeah. to you know everything was just fitness based everything you know you will be able to do you know 12 dives without without <laughs> hardly breathing what's the point of that Genius. There's no point, but you know what I mean? That's yeah. why I think that's one of the other lots of things that's moved on a bit where yeah. you, you're trying to do stuff that on a Saturday you, you're ready to make that, that one, one yeah. save that might yeah. win you the game. Instead of like every session just being, right, we're going to batter you into the ground. Yeah. And I think like outfield players, that's moved on as well because years ago it used to just be like tons and tons of running. We're just going to run you. Yeah. Where yeah. even in pre-season now, near enough, everyone has the ball out on the first day. Years yeah. ago, you you didn't see a ball for about it. a week. Mm, gosh. But you know what I mean. The the, the game's changed in the, in that mm. manner as well. Yeah, definitely. I know from my point of view, like obviously been under under your kind of coaching for the last four. What is it now? It must be five, six, yeah. seven years, something like mm. that. I can definitely see that your sessions have changed through like you doing your air license and all your other badges and stuff. What kind of um, things would they tell you on the air license to do? What kind of like tips did they give you? for the sessions that you put on for your goalkeepers? I think uh, one of the main things I, I probably, and you two worked under me, and um, the, one of the things that I took from the course, or a couple of things I took from the course, were like, I maybe always shout go, or you know, yeah. give, you, give you some indication when the yeah. ball's coming. Whereas one of the sessions, the things we did on the course was like about cues. And... Uh, the, the centre forward doesn't tell you when he's going to shoot. Yeah, no, so, you know, I've, I've, I've this chat with ads in the training sessions and I've done a lot more of, you know, just it's, it's, it's going to, you know, it's on your just turn when, or yeah. it's coming when, when it's coming, you know mm. what I mean? And when it's on its way, I ain't going to give you, I ain't going to shout go, mm. I ain't going to let you get ready. Um, so, you know, and that's, that's one of the things I've tried. Different services are, are probably in the past, if I'm if I'm doing a, a drill, I'll probably do the, done the same serve. Now I'll probably mix all the serves up mm -hmm. within that drill. Mm -hmm. So you, you haven't really got a clue what's what's coming because as I said on a Saturday, the centre forward doesn't say to you, right, <laughs> I'm gonna put this one to you to your right about midway. <laughs> it'd be a lot easier if they did <laughs> that, wasn't yeah, it? I'm sure the goalkeeper. That's what that was probably one of the yeah. biggest things that um, in my head that I come away from the course and thought, yeah, I, I need to sort of not make it as as like you know easy as mm. as what I, not easy but as easy in your head uh, yeah predictable you know, yeah predictable yeah, yeah definitely so that's one of the things um just as i said a, a lot of the um sessions they do especially with uh england uh called reality based training as well so we're doing a lot in in sort of that happens in a game Mm. Um, doing a lot like that so yeah. um, and as you say I've tried to change that a little bit in, in our sessions in the last mm. probably this season Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. also nicking some things off Danish goalkeeping online <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's yeah. what I, I used to watch um, we've had well, stories yeah, I, I used to watch uh, the goalie coach Enarka Kana his name was for mm. anyone who, who doesn't know what that was about <laughs> uh, and I watched him when he was like uh, I think he was in Cyprus to begin with and yeah. then he was in Denmark and then out the blue a couple of years ago he came to England as Brentford goalie coach and now he's Arsenal goalie coach <laughs> so, and I've been watching him for about six You've years you his progress uh, nicking, nicking all these sessions and tampering with them and, and turning them into yeah, mine so, and I did, ta I did used to sit and say to uh, when we'd start training. And yeah, I've been watching that one yeah. on YouTube. I've been watching him again. And then, uh, and actually Luke Daniels, who we, we had at Scunthorpe, he ended up being his goalie coach at, uh, at Brentford as well mm. for a while. So, Jeez. But he's now Arsenal goalkeeping coach. So. He's not done bad then. He's watching he's someone who was bad. half decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think for me, I want to touch back on your playing career a little bit. So obviously you played however many games in the Football League and across mm. a lot of the divisions. Can you pinpoint a couple of matches or a favourite match that you've been involved in? And like explain why that is your favourite game, whether you played well or it was a big occasion or something like that. Yeah, I think like at Port Vale every year we we had a very good like uh, cup draw near enough mm. every year. Yeah, uh, we've had these stories yeah, I think, so, a few times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I think, like as I said, the and I've said it to you a million times that we played Arsenal mm. um, in the FA Cup in 1998, mm -hmm. um, and we we drew nil nil at Highbury, mm. which at the time, you know, it, it was a great day, fantastic yeah. day that. And then we actually the the replay, we took them to penalties as well, which we lost on penalties. Oh, and ahead. after that, they went, they never lost again uh, that season. That mm. was a the year they were miles behind Man United, mm. and they won the league and they won the FA Cup. So. That that was, um, you know, when I look back and I think if I could go back to that day at Highbury mm. and as I said, I had half decent game as well. Yeah. Um, Sorry, and as I said, they had back then uh, they put near enough their whole full team out, so mm. there weren't many changes then. Um, so we, we done really well, and as I said, we we were unfortunate in the in the replay to lose at home on penalties mm. as well. Definitely. More of, a, more of a personal question here. Um, <laughs> that first game at the KC, so obviously you've been at Blue Free Park, which is an amazing stadium, uh, or was, I should say. It's now a housing estate. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like coming from such a, an old-fashioned stadium, uh, moving into, obviously, the KC, what is now the KCOM? Uh, what's what's a, what's the difference? You know, is there a massive difference? I think um, I think we played Darlington on the Saturday, and I'm sure there was about eleven or twelve thousand. I think oh. like, over the years at Boothry, I was lucky. We we well, we went into administration. Mm -hmm. uh, my first year, I'd only been there probably two or three months, and we went into administration, and we had a right good run in administration, and we we came out and we were in the playoff places, and I think the first game we had someone like. I think it was, or I'm going to say Orient, and there was about 10, 11, 12,000 there. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we also got Orient, we lost to Orient in the playoffs, but in the first game, I'm sure there was about 14 or 15,000 at Boothbury. And it was, it was, you know, when you look back, one of the best atmospheres uh, in my whole career I'd played under. Um, I, I actually, I like the K, I still call it the KC Stadium, yeah. if I'm allowed. <laughs> um, for, I think, a lot of the, like the new big big new grounds, mm. um, they're probably not as great an atmosphere as the older grounds, mm. but I think the KC um, wasn't, I think like, because the first few games we had there, like I think the first game against, um, we played Sunderland in a friendly as the opening, uh, and then I think it was a couple of weeks later, we had Hartlepool on Boxing Day, and that was like, and there was like, Hartlepool at home, there was about 24,000 oh, there. Gosh. So, you know what I mean? There's no way you cannot have no. a good atmosphere. With, yeah, not and most, house. and as I said, it was probably 20, 23 and a half thousand mm -hmm. whole supporters, and we won 2 0 as well, so it was a fantastic atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm and sure that year, as I said, we, we, we followed on and, and got promoted as well, so the ground was regularly full. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was. Good Shit. atmosphere. Shame with how it's gone, really, on it with. <laughs> with Hull not that I'm biased or anything but <laughs> it is a shame but obviously the crowd will come back eventually I'm sure but no um, you talk about big crowds I had this one in oh did you a little little, uh, a little one that we've not really spoken about you talk about big crowds and stuff obviously now with the amount of uh, TV time that football gets on mm. on the radio on the TV on Sky everything like that how do you deal with it mentally when you're against a big crowd how do you think like if you're away at a big game like a local derby or anything like that how do you deal with the pressure of being in front of 25,000 people, as you say, all jeering against you and giving you all stick and things like that. What do you, what, what can you say about that? And I, from my own point, I was lucky that I never really used to get that nervous. I've always been like, mm. probably as mo as you, you've you seen me over the years, that's how I was when I played. I was laid yeah. back. Um, and I was, you know, as I said, I was probably lucky that I played for four years at Scunthorpe mm. in what was then was, was League Two, but was called Division Four then. Um, and played in some big, probably some biggest games as well. Then uh, against Grimsby, we played regularly, um, and um, once again we did well. Probably for four, three of my four we, first four years, we lost in the playoffs. Mm. So I played in decent games then. Um, when I went to Port Vale, my first year, we we uh, I played Stoke five times. Oh wow! Well, so, the Potteries Derby. Yeah, the Potteries Derby. <laughs> so back then, as I said, the, the Stokes ground was like an old ground, Victoria ground. Mm. Uh, and my first, I'd just got in Port Vale's team uh, and it was about my fifth game and it was uh, 25,000 at the Victoria oh, ground. Wow. Bad. With probably, they used to have one massive, a massive stand behind the goal called the Boothin End. Mm. Uh, and as I said, if you... The, the amount of stick that was probably the most stick I've ever got, uh, and you just do you have to deal with it. Yeah. You have to deal with it. So, and we ended up playing Stoke five times that year. So, 
you know, there's plenty of abuse. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a goalkeeper, you, you, no matter what level you play, you could be playing yeah. at non-league in front of, it's probably worse than it non-league in front of, because you can hear 10 people giving yeah. you abuse. You've got yeah. three, yeah. five people at yeah, the game exactly. who are stood behind yeah, your goals. Giving you abuse, so, you know what I mean? It's, mm. it's probably, you get lost in a game, don't you? That's the yeah. thing. You still, as I said, if you've probably got a small number of people watching you or a big number, you still get lost in your game. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably that's that's how the top goalkeepers manage to deal with it as well. Mm. So obviously, we've come in towards the end of our time together. Last question from me, and Sam might have a final question as well. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, what is one the one bit of advice that you were given growing up that's really stuck with you uh, through goalkeeping that you've taken into games and things like that what what would be the one thing that you'd say um i don't know I, I was it was weird because i was released as an apprentice mm. and then i used to i used to take some of the um goalkeepers um the school boys i was an apprentice so i got released and then as is what i've said a couple of times i got uh, i signed a year non-contract and went on loan to a couple of teams so basically portsmouth still owned you mm. Um, it's like playing non-league where if someone wants you, basically I would have thought at the time um, that someone could have put notice in on you and, and signed you. I went on loan to two non-league teams and I went on loan to Scunthorpe. Um, but what happened, I got released and then about a week later, they, they, they the, you know, the, the people in charge then were Alan Ball, mm. who was obviously England World Cup winner, and Peter Osgood was my youth team manager and he, he gave me sort of... You know, he was so behind me and wanted me to do well. He was probably, you know, the first person who said you could be a professional goalkeeper. Mm. Um, uh, and I got offered uh, about a week later after being released, they pulled me and just said, look, we'll give you a, a year non-contract. And I was like, you know, I, I thought at the time I was good enough to go and earn a contract somewhere. Um, but he, he sort of advised me to take mm. it. Uh, and that was probably, you know, the best advice I had, really. Mm. Just take this uh, and, and you know, you, you're training at a football club every day. Yeah. If I hadn't have got that, I might have gone into non-league and not been working every day. Mm. Um, so, you know, training every day um, and Peter Rosgood saying, you know, you need to take this, whether it's a full contract or a non-contract, mm. you need to take this. Um, and that was probably... Good advice, but you know, ev- ev- everything uh, everyone always says: work hard. You know, your you, your football career. Um, people are used to say, "Oh, it's quite short." You know, it might it, you might not be sort of around after you're thirty five. I don't know what the average age now is, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean. But mm-hmm. you work hard every day, and as I said, you too. As I said, when work with you, you, you I think everyone works hard. Everyone, you know, wants to. Yeah make that that step into professional football, especially when you've been an apprentice as well. So, um, but if you get a chance as well, you know, you, you, you've got to be lucky as well. You've got to be lucky when your chance comes and you've got to be ready. So, um, I, I think like in football, uh, a lot of people um, don't get that chance. You know, we, we, there's a lot of people who are schoolboys who get released um, and apprentices get released. I, I think the, the the people who go on to become uh, pros is, you know what I mean, not a very, very small percentage of people in football. Well, I think that's everything for today. Yeah. It's been good to have you us. Uh, okay. really appreciate you coming down. Thank, Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm sure we'll indict you again, don't you? <laughs> Especially if you're making good comments on that goal. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, thanks great. for coming us and okay. we, uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.